to Poverty Fighters TV on the YouTube channel. Um, we are associating with you directly, talking to you from the office of the Poverty Fighters Squad in Abuja. The program is Reflections with Atuba Adele. I want to welcome you to today's program by first of all thanking you for visiting our channel and encouraging others to do safe. Like you know, on Reflections with Otuma most of the time what we discuss mainly has to do with eradication of poverty from Nigeria. Because we are always reminded that Nigeria is the capital city of poverty us. Equally, we have always been able to bring you along as partners in the fight against poverty. Uh, an advocacy that we are doing in order to enrich the people in Nigeria, the knowledge against poverty and how to get out of it. So today, you are welcome once again. And today's reflection has to do with the immediate past governance in Nigeria that has been making efforts, even though little, to ensure that more people are taken out of poverty. But because our population is at a growth rate of about, I think it's about 5% annually, the population is getting larger every time and this makes it very mandatory for every Nigerian, every Nigerian that is wishing us well, every patriotic Nigeria, to look out for ways and systems of how to take away poverty from Nigeria, bringing out a greater number of people out of that level of poverty getting more people jobs, opening different entrepreneurial uh, uh, programs and industries and settlements and factories, things that can make life much easier for people. So it is in that vein that we are looking into what is known as cottage industries. Cottage industries under Poverty Fighters Squad has to do with businesses that you can do at the back of your homes that you don't need large sums of money to establish. Businesses that can be family business, things that you can be doing more manageably, even if it is only to feed your own family, it is well accepted. Because if you put snailry, for example, Snails now in the market, of course, we all know what it is. But because fewer people are the ones that are rearing it, as people who want to take people out of poverty in Nigeria, we have identified snail as one of the very, very easy, not back-breaking farming, not sweating, wearing rags and things farming, no. This is a corporate farming. This is a corporate cottage industry farming that you can do with a little space at the back of your house or your flat, for that matter, or your balcony. You can address yourself to a cottage industry of snailery. Snailery does not give, it doesn't have odor, it doesn't smell, it's not poultry that people, some people do run away from. Some people are very, very finicky. You can't even stand the smell of anything. So when we are talking about snailery, it is very, very easy, very conducive, very attractive, very lucrative. By the time you come to our training and you get the information of how to do this snailery we are talking about, you'll be surprised the way they breed. They breed very fast. They bring out eggs almost as regularly as you can think, and they hash within a few days to one another. And you need just a little space with a cage up and down 
you, we, we address the cake for you, we show you how it is done, and you have it there. It doesn't take you anything. All they, all they need is just leaves. These are our common leaves. If you go to anywhere, just take some grass, take some leaves, and some other ingredients, you put it there, they will, they will be there alive for you. And they come out in big, big sizes. So on this, what you need to do is to go into our website to register as a member of Poverty Fighter Squad. The, w, the, the, the website address is www.ikejachamber.com. You go in there, you see. Once again, you are welcome to this episode. This episode is going to inform us of how other people around, that is other people in other clients, are doing their own business in order to fight poverty. My name is Samuel Adele. I'm a poverty fighter. And my intention today is to bring you those information apart from having discussed the agricultural part, how other countries are using tourism to fight poverty. One of our closest neighbors here, an, an English-speaking country, an Anglophone like ours, is Ghana. Ghana, all of us know they are our brothers, even though we have our differences in different political arena. But they have something that we too can you know, can learn from. Ghana is using tourism to fight poverty. They are using tourism to bring dollars, to bring investment, to bring peace, to bring joy and riches to their country. Ghana is not big as Nigeria in size, in geographical size, but they have been able to manage their lives in such a way that they may not be at the top of the world, but they are happy. Instead of our own country being the happiest people, they have labeled us to be the poorest in economic terms, the poorest where poverty resides. That's the capital of poverty in the whole world. We have been preaching on this channel that that should not be our portion. For it not to be our portion, it is for us to stand up to it and live up to it and give better things to our generation years to come. Not forgetting that you are on Reflections with Otumba Adeleye. I just want to show you some things that will be coming up because we, are, we too we are going to use tourism to fight poverty. I will play you videos from other countries. I'm using Ghana as a starting now because I promise you will see very much more. Ghana today they are thriving. It's a thriving economy because they are patriotic. It is a country of integrity. An average Nigerian will not lie to you. We don't use such things to build the kingdom. The house that is built under tourism using tourism to fight poverty. Because by the time they project their countries, I was talking about their integrity as a people. They have been able to put themselves in the position that other countries can trust them. I don't know which day we can talk about Nigeria like this, where there will be less corruption, less kidnapping, less the banditry, and such names that we never had before. When we were young, we don't know anything like I'm robbing. I don't know anything like kidnapping. It's like, it's like a fiction. Banditry. Katuriari. So many dirty language words. Eh? That is not even good for our psyche as a people. How we got to this point, a lot of us are still wondering. But now that we find ourselves in this position, we must be able to know how to deal with it. This issue of poverty came 
because people are looking for what they cannot get. Everybody wants to be a dangote. Everybody wants to be a pedola. Everybody wants to be a billionaire. How can everybody be billionaires? Eh? There is high class, there is middle class, there is low class. At the same time, there is a regular opportunity for everybody in the country as a citizen to enjoy the basics of life. When things are not properly shaped, then people who, who have lesser spirit, who are not that strong, don't forget that somebody who leaves his home and take a cutlass and go to another person's home to go and, and kill the person and take whatever the person has. He's a weak, he's a weak-minded person. He's not a strong soul. He's a weak, very weak soul. And these are the kind of souls that disturb the stronger ones. The stronger ones are those of you who are working decently to earn a decent living. You are the real people. These other people that are looking for fast way or taking his own gun. Any, anybody can take a, a gun or a gun lab to go and meet somebody else. So I don't see it as any, any, any innovation for them. They are wrong. They are doing very wrong thing and they are, they are shortening the lives of people. They are destroying other people's properties. You know? And this, it doesn't make this life very comfortable. Foreigners who come to Nigeria are those who know how to cut corners. Their new businesses are not coming to Nigeria. This is a fact. People who come to Nigeria to come and do business, foreigners who come to the come and do business, there is no business environment in Nigeria. It is either you are corrupt, or you know how to do corruption, or you know how to cut corners, or you, or, 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 or you can be as, as wicked as not thinking of other people. Those are the people that you find in Nigeria. In the city of Accra, a foreigner can walk from morning till night without aid, without guide, without, without mobile police, without anything, and, and walk freely. No Ghanaian will go and stop him or go and kidnap him or say they want to do something with him or, or ritual killing and all this, something you hear from this side of the world. I am not apologetic for being emotional. Because this issue of poverty fighting is not a day job. And my viewer, my viewer, I beg of you, try to look for a way that we can reduce this poverty level. Meanwhile, let's watch this video from Accra City of Ghana. Thank you. Hi guys, we are back again, Charlie. And if it's your first time on my YouTube channel, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to share with your friends. Guys, you can't be bored in Accra. This is right close to our homes. <laughs> and this place is called the Marina Park at the Lakeside Estate. And I'm not here alone. I'm here with a natural Ghana girl. Hey, look at the energy. <laughs> <laughs> so she's called Dela. Dela recently moved with her family to Ghana and mm -hmm. she's documenting the entire journey building in Ghana with her family. Yep. And so yeah, tell them, tell them. Yes. Tell them, tell them. Yes. <laughs> yes. So we've been in Ghana for six years now and okay. we are building our house. Some might call it a dream house. I'm not uh -huh. sure. We'll uh -huh. see when it's finished. It's our, it's I'll call it a dream. It's a dream house, eh? <laughs> yeah. Yes. So I like to basically just show people the building process. So then I also like to talk about other things that I've discovered in Ghana. Obviously, I wasn't raised here, so I like to learn a bit more about okay. the culture parts that I've missed. And how has it been so far? It's been good. It's been good. I cannot complain. I cannot complain. <laughs> I always say I'm solar powered. So as long as I've got the sun, mm -hmm. I'm good to go. Eh? I can see you're see. already representing us. Of course, I have to uh, <laughs> see my top. So guys, <laughs> let's go right into the video. Yes. <laughs>
and they have a mini golf course here. So today the clouds are really looking blue and it's really adding a it's adding more beauty to the place which <laughs> I'm so grateful that's what happens whenever it rains in Ghana the next day is always very sunny very bright it's, the sun is so hot today man So we are about to go for a you horse ride. You're not gonna leave me with the horse, are you? Why are you scared? Yes. <laughs> you, you go with Just the it. Horse. Yeah. You hold it. Hey Stella, you want to go first? Yeah, no. <laughs> are you sure? You're already shaking. Take the next road. So meet my new friend. What's his name? Ramadan. What's his name? Ramadan. Ramadan. Wow. <laughs> Ramadan. Say hello, Ramadan. This is me or my new friend, Ramadan. <laughs> How old is he? Ten. Ten years. Oh, okay. So of course, before a boat, right? Have to secure it. We are getting ready. Ready? Yeah. How about look? You look uh, like a military person. <laughs> so we are ready. We are going boat oh. riding. about your stay here how has it been so far in Ghana and your entire journey to building your dream home oh do you know it's been a very much an up and down journey I can't say every day has been great but for the most part it has been I've learned so much about myself I've learned about just living in Ghana I've learned so many things I absolutely love it here and I would really recommend even if you're not coming to live here just come and just experience a different lifestyle a different life Ghana Africa whichever one it's just it's amazing it's amazing I would never ever take back this experience. Never. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sure by now you are so used to um, Ghana uh, economy, our prices. Uh -huh. Would you say Ghana is expensive? It can be expensive depending on the kind of lifestyle that you want to leave. Please. Um, but honestly, yeah, it depends. It depends on your pocket what you can afford. If you want to live like you do in the West, then obviously it's very expensive. 
But if you're willing to compromise and eat locally and do things local, then you know there, there's there's plenty you can do. It works, you know. <laughs> Have you tried our local meals? Oh, Everything. Please, don't get me started on that. <laughs> <laughs> tell me, tell me, what, tell me your favorite now so far. My favorite. Oh, it's always Banco Nokro for sure. Okay. Nokro, but I love Kelewele. I love Jellof. Um, what did you just say, Jellof? Jellof. Jollof. 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 Your love, yes. <laughs> you know I know, right? Thank you so much for it's enjoying not... your time with me. I oh, also no. okay, have a so good time. time. I hope you enjoyed this vlog as much as I enjoyed being here, as much uh -huh. as I enjoyed being with Sweetheart Della, the natural girl. You should also check out her YouTube channel. I'll leave her, um, mm -hmm. her details in the description below. Check it out, and yeah, yeah, that's it. Well, what else do you have to say to them? Subscribe. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't and subscribe to my channel if you haven't. <laughs> so go for it. <laughs> <laughs> so until next time in my next vlog, I love you all as always. enjoy their lives you have just seen how normal life goes on in Accra the city is clean the people are honest business is going on people go to the beach they enjoy themselves and they have a lot more I will only encourage us The website address, like I was saying now, is www.ikejachamber.com And the telephone number you can reach us if you want to reach us by phone is 090 090-99-5515 090-99-99-5515 that takes you directly to Poverty Fighter Squad office. Now, snailery, like I was saying, happens to be one uh, cottage industry that you can do as a backyard factory for yourself. You can be a man, you can be a woman, whether young or old. It's very easy to track. You can manage it very successfully. I come to talk about marketing. That is one brand of cuisine that people are looking for all over. You can imagine that when you go to a good restaurant, the minimum you can get for a snail, a portion of snail to buy, well seasoned snail, is about a thousand. Some go for two thousand and more. So you can imagine if you have about hundred pieces of such and you are sending to your customer. And of course, the customers are always there. And what we get from, from the field is that they even, they even you know, uh, purchase in advance. They will pay you ahead for the supply. And you are going to be very happy about it. So this is another way of taking people out of poverty from our system. 
From our system, we have also discovered that after joining us, you can have training with us. It's the, the registration is once and for all. It's once for a lifetime. It's once for a lifetime. Once you are trained, if you come back again and say you want to be trained on poultry, you want to be trained on rabbiting, you have paid and you have paid. And the training always come up uh, both in Lagos and Abuja. In Lagos, we have our office in Okwebi, that's in Kedja, for those who know Lagos well. And the one in Abuja takes place at Ogu Street, that is 3B Ogu Street, that's where I'm talking to you from now. That is uh, Ogu Street, Area 2, Garki, Abuja. Training comes up on Tuesdays and on Saturdays at 12 noon every, of every week. So if you don't miss the opportunity, you'll be glad you came. Still talking about snailry, we go to the nutritional benefit of this product. Agriculture, like we have established, is the longest profession on this earth. But because instead of calling it agriculture, they call it farming. And when people hear farming, they are already scared. They don't want to be inside the sun. He doesn't want to break his back, he doesn't want to plow the ground, he doesn't want anything that will take sweat out of him or her. So, we have worked out a system from Poverty Fighter Squad that will make you a corporate farmer. I've just told you that on your balcony, you can do your snary, at your backyard, you can do your snary. If you have enough space, if you have a garden, most importantly, you can have it there. It has to have a cage, a wire gauze cage, which put together does not even cost you anything like uh, some, uh, you know, it doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't leak your pocket. It's something that you can do and do very conveniently at a price that will be happy you are involved. So I'm encouraging everybody, give yourself the time. Even if you have a, a, a paying job now, that is you have a salary somewhere, Use part of that investment, come into snailery. We will teach you how to put it together. We show you where to buy. We show you how the archery is made. We show you how you can rear them and rear them profitably. The second one is the nutritional benefit of snails in the body system. Snailery has one of the best nutrition in terms of what you need to grow your body well. And it gives us a lot of pleasure to let you know that people, well, maybe some people think it's high class food. It is not so. It is because there are lesser farmers that are rearing snail. So snail is very scarce. But for some regions, uh, like the Delta, like the, like the Edo area, they have it in quantum because it's in the forest. You just go there and pick. But because all of us cannot be going into the forest, we are taking out to make it a cottage industry where you can have it on your balcony, at your backyard, or your, your, your garden, you know, and you can rear them very efficiently. It doesn't, it doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't take any sweat out of you at all. I've mentioned earlier around that it is green they eat. They live on green, green leaf, any green leaf. I don't even want to mention the one that costs money. Just go to the to any backyard, cut any green, and give it to them. And you'll be surprised the sizes they will come out to be. And it has a, only a short period for them to become mature. The maturity period is very, very short. You know, anything from two, three months, you're already rearing them. And all you need is just to listen to what I'm saying and take action on it. Come and register the Poverty Fighter Squad. And we give you all these technicalities, all the, all the expertise that you need, and support you as well. We don't take you for our membership and dump you somewhere. We come with you, we survive with you, we ensure that you are a success story, so that other people too can learn from you and also benefit. You will even be the one to be preaching the gospel to them. Because by the time you see the advantage that you have in it, you will tell others. And uh, I also need to let you know that the, the saliva from snail 
it is a very profitable syrup. They use it for generally for syrups, both for adult syrup and the children's syrup. They also use it in cosmetics. I'm just letting out the cut in the back openly now. But when you come for our training, when you get registered, you will know much more. This is a product that has almost everything about snail makes money. Almost everything. Even the shell. Even the shell. There are some components of the shell that they use in pharmaceuticals. You know? So, I want you to make up your mind. Quickly go to www.ikejachamber.com and register. Register your sister, register your brothers. Every one of us, in each family, there must be a farmer. We need one farmer, one family. Everybody do not have to. You can be a medical doctor, it doesn't matter to us. But farming is a basic lifestyle job.